sea monsters. We love them. In fact, sea monsters is pretty much the start of anything mystical in forms of sea-bound titans. Pirates and buccaneers of old used to tell stories of large mythical creatures that they saw on their travels. Mermaids, krakens, hydras, even ghost ships and crews of the undead. Unfortunately, most of these sightings were nothing more than hearsay, or drunken sailors spotting a dolphin in the water and telling the crew it was a hot gal with a fishtail. They didn't have movies back then. I know that's a big shocker, but they didn't, and most people were illiterate. So listening to the wildly strung tales of fishermen or sailors in a tavern was a great form of entertainment for townsfolk. And since the majority of people lived humble lives in houses essentially made from hay and horse poop, they had no understanding of the outside world. So these pioneers could string together amazing tales of sea monsters, hidden stashes of gold, and mystical temples, and the town folk would simply believe them. It's just like in Sea of Thieves where you tell your friends you took down an entire galleon with a single boon kick, sunk them, and then stole all their loot, when in reality you got killed on a ladder and found a chest on a shoreline somewhere. You liar. But Sea of Thieves does have sea monsters, and the land of Sea of Thieves adopts these tales of old and puts them all into a little sanctuary, away from the prying eyes of the outside world. But for the longest time now, we have only ever had three dominant sea titans. The Megalodon, the Kraken, and Rocks. When Sea of Thieves was released, its main form of clickbait, I guess you could say, was the emergence of the Kraken. When people saw this scene, even myself, it instantly made my interest go from about 6 out of 10 to about 15 out of 10. People love sea monsters, but unfortunately the Kraken has never really been much more than a bunch of tentacles, apart from a debut hit of a head in one of the tall tales where they turned the silver blade into an elevator. You're still not forgiven, Rare. Shortly after the game's release, they started to hint at a new sea monster coming to the game. Although they never specifically said at the start it was going to be a Megalodon, it still had people hyped. As stated before, people love sea monsters. This update came at a time too when Sea of Thieves was not really doing so well. It had a rocky release and people didn't even think it would survive to a first update. But sure enough, one came, and images started to surface of what this sea creature looked like, and the community went wild. Plus, this first form of the Megalodon was hard. The megs we see in the game right now are very tame. This old boy used to ram you every 15 seconds, send the ship and crew flying, and put around 7 to 8 holes in your ship every time it rammed. It was not an easy task. But that was year one of Sea of Thieves, and since then we are yet to see any other sea titan make its way to the seas. But maybe one is lurking somewhere. What leads me to this conclusion? Well, first off, you may have noticed, but Rare love to add season rewards to each season that kind of hint towards what's coming for the next season. As a plain example, in Season 2, all of our ship cosmetics and other fluff was very much pointing us in the direction of mermaids and sunken kingdoms. And sure enough, in Season 3, Pirate's Life was announced, where the story revolved very much around this subject matter. They do this kind of thing very often, not just with Season and rewards, but with in-game commendation cosmetics and the Pirate Emporium too. And Season 9 is another example of this. Ship rewards telling tales of massive sea creatures, and a Pirate Emporium ship set of a sea serpent. Not only that, but an in-game reward of a Hydra ship set. Incidentally, this ship set is known as the Fate of Fortune ship set, which is interesting for a number of reasons. The story as of late has been talking about the Flames of Fate, the ones we get from the Ferry of the Dam, and the Hourglass of Fate seen in Season 8 Dives. The Fates, as far as we are aware, are a sort of entity within the Sea of the Damned that essentially hold its power. Within the novels, they are kind of hinted at and talked about as actual entities, and presumably something, someone, or somehow tied to the ferryman's power. And interestingly, the Chest of Fortune, which is needed for this ship set, has jewels upon it that share the same colours as the Flames of Fate. And in the most recent adventure, Tasha shares some stories she was given by Briggsy, and shows this picture of a monster within the Sea of the Damned locked in some sort of vault. Now this is a rudimentary kids picture, but as we can see, this essentially looks like three flames, with faces. Flames, flames of fate, faces, the fates. But maybe this is the fates non-corporeal form. Maybe, once manifested fully, they take on the form of a sea hydra. 
or this is just a kid's representation of a sea hydra. Plus, it's known that the ancients have a place within the Sea of the Damned where they keep all of their most powerful weapons, in case they ever need to strike back from the meddling of the outside world. And the ancients, in part, with the help of the merfolk, helped kill the Old Mother, the Mother of Krakens, whose siblings were killing all ambient sea life back in the Sea of Thieves. So it would make sense, especially considering in the Sea of the Damned, memories can take form, that they would lock up a creature like this, waiting for the perfect time to unleash it on the world. And maybe this time is very soon. Thanks for watching, peeps. Before I go, I just want to shout out the wonderful people over at Apex Gaming PCs. They have been a sponsor for the channel and the hardware behind the channel's production for a long time now. They offer some great builds for people who haven't got the foggiest how to build a custom setup. You can either pick from a bespoke line that will tell you the sort of games you can play in HD, or you can do a little research of your own and craft your very own rig. Plus, if you use code FALCOR at checkout, you can save some cash, and all links are down below. But until next time, Calm seas and wind in your sails. Peace!